we are more recently arrived at Berkeley, necessarily know the whole story. So before introducing you to our distinguished speakers, who will speak to different aspects of Mario's historical significance, I'd like to read from the first paragraph of the introduction of the biography um, that Robbie wrote, which sets out the scene. I'm going to have to sit down for this, because I can't pull the book in. We pull this mic at the same time. <laughs> this is always a problem in lecture classes. It's hard to do Tom Cruise and Magnolia and hold a book. <laughs> few, pro few protest leaders have burst upon the American political scene more dramatically than did Mario Savio in the fall of 1964 when he was a 21-year-old Berkeley student. The University of California had become the scene of nonviolent political warfare, with the administration enforcing and students defying a campus ban on political advocacy that closed down the free speech area at UC's busy south southern entrance. Coming at a time when student civil rights activism was surging, the ban seemed an attack on the civil rights movement and a gross violation of the right to free speech, igniting protests in mid and late September. This conflict escalated just before noon on October 1 as police drove a squad car to UC Berkeley's central thoroughfare, Strahl Plaza, to arrest civil rights organizer Jack Weinberg because he, like many free speech activists, was defying the ban by staffing a political advocacy table on the plaza. Before the police could complete the arrest, someone shouted, sit down! Within moments, a crowd of students surrounded the car in a nonviolent blockade that would last 32 hours. Shortly after the blockade began, Mario Savio, a leader of the civil rights group University Friends of SNCC, SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, removing his shoes so as not to damage the police car, climbed on top of it and into national headlines, using its roof as a podium to explain the protest and demand freedom of speech. From those first moments atop that car, Savio emerged as the Berkeley Rebellion's key spokesperson symbolizing all that was daring, militant, and new about the free speech movement. That's the first paragraph of this book, which I hope will encourage you to buy it. Um, and now I'd like to introduce our speakers in sequence. Since all the talks are meant to be quite brief, I think it makes sense for me to tell you all who they are um, up front. Um, our first speaker will be Professor Leon Litwack, um, uh, professor Litwack is Alexander F. and May T. Morrison Professor of American History Emeritus. He's the author of many books, including the Pulitzer Prize winning Been in the Storm So Long, The Aftermath of Slavery, and the winner, and he is also the winner of the Golden Apple Award for Outstanding Teaching in 2007. He started teaching here at UC, at UC Berkeley in 1964. Our second speaker will be Peter Hagen, who is a student in Professor Les Ferris' History of Printing class which is hand-setting two of Mario's letters from Mississippi, written during the Freedom Summer of 1964. And I believe he will be reading from parts of these letters today. With us also is Lynn Hollander Savio, the widow of Mario Savio. She is herself an FSM veteran and the energetic chair of the Mario Savio Board that every year keeps Mario's legacy alive by bringing a distinguished public intellectual to speak on campus and gives out a Young Activist Award. Our fourth speaker is Professor Scott Saul, my treasured colleague from uh, the Department of English and American Studies. He is the award-winning author of Freedom Is, Freedom Ain't, Jazz in the Making of the 60s, and also the recipient of the 2009 American Cultures Innovation and Teaching Award. He writes regularly for The Nation, for Raritan, and Harper's Magazine, and models the capacity of my generation of increasingly specialized academics to, to still write for a wider public audience. Starting in late August of this year, Scott is also a key member of the Coordinating Council of Save the University, the UC Berkeley faculty group formed in July of this year to defend public education. Um, I will come after, I will speak a little bit after Scott. And then finally, the author of Freedom's Orator, Robbie Cohen himself, to my right. Robbie teaches social studies and history at NYU, where he also chairs the Department of Teaching and Learning at NYU Steinhardt School of Education. He did his PhD in history here at Berkeley and is the author of When the Old Left Was Young, about student activism in the 1930s, 
and is the co-editor with Reggie Zelnick of the free speech movement Reflections on Berkeley in the 1960s. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to our speakers. Essentially, is giving you some history.